Hello. Hey. Hi, um, how hey. Are how are you? Yes, good. Thank you. Um, at work, obviously, as you can probably tell. Yeah. This isn't, this is my home attire. And, uh, yes. How, how are things? I, I find that the we've done a few of these sessions that we've recorded, and I find the audio is actually best in a room like the one you're in, because um, okay. uh, the bigger the room is, the more the sound gets diluted. Quite possibly, yeah. But the trainees talk to me as if I'm an old lady who has no idea of technology, which is about the size of it, I think. <laughs> well, I think there are degrees, aren't they? I mean, I'm, I'm fully aware that there's this technology out there that kids are so comfortable with and so fluid with that I've just, it's passed me by. I can use WhatsApp, of course, yeah. But um, yeah, that's, that's probably where it, where it ends, yeah. Um, great, okay. How are you? You have to, um, uh, hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you really well. How and are you? Good morning. Thank you for your invitation. Thank you. No, good thank morning. you for coming. Oh, Oda is here as well. Hello. Yes, I don't want to unmute him. That's a bit aggressive, isn't it? Like demanding somebody <laughs> speaks. <laughs> I think. Oh, he's, he's about to speak. I think it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I have a question before yeah. we start. Um, oh. Previously, when we are uh, almost time uh, the night on call, so I I have one patient and he's, I know that he's medically unwell and he may be postponed because of his medical condition. So when I try to go to the anesthetist to see the patient the day before, he usually tell me, no, we are not seeing the patients uh, by night. Yeah. There is a morning team which will anesthetize the patient and he will see him. Yeah, so no. This is the I, I completely understand that as a problem. The the, the anesthetist in nine is generally looking after the, the patient there. So but we we've, we've talked about this as a department and this is something that we're working on changing the culture of, being that we're more supportive. Um they can often be busy. Um and so one of the things that they would require is to have all the information there beforehand. The theatre and anesthetist in nine can't always leave theatre to go and assess the patient, but what they can do is look at the information that they've been provided. So if, if some a patient comes in that has heart failure, for example, um, they can offer advice and say, well, we need to explore who's looking after the heart failure, how severe is it, how far can they walk, You know, what degree of shortness of breath do they have? Um, have they had a recent echo? They're the kind of questions that we can prompt and look into further. If somebody is particularly complex, we would get someone to go and have a look at the patient ourselves. But this, this form is a prompt to the next step of, it's, it's a risk assessment, the first step in, a, in the risk assessment of a patient. I know the problem that you're talking about, and that's, as I say, that's something that we have talked about as a department, and that's one of the things that we're trying to change and trying to improve, that we take more ownership of these sick patients. I think I think what I think what Amma's describing is um, not not necessarily his interaction with the, with the anesthetist in theatre nine. He's talking about overnight. You know, if you if you admit a patient oh, no, yeah. and um, you can see there's a problem, oh. but you know, as orthopedic surgeons, we we don't really know we don't have a handle on um, where we go yeah. with that. And, and and there's some you know recognition that something we should probably do something, but we're not sure what. Um, yeah. And so I guess what I would say, uh, Amit, is that. The, 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 the anaesthetic team who are in Theatre 12, their, their resource is, is purely for patients who need emergency surgery um, at the moment. And, and, and we don't really want to be, we don't really have the ability to, to, to use them, you know, for assessing our, our, our trauma patients who are going to not be, be, be on that list. Um, so the way we hope this will help is by um, is by by not when the patient first comes in, we don't have to immediately seek advice or burden the emergency um, you know part of the service. That's not the aim of this. The aim of this is to to gather information for us to gather information when we first see the patient, and then in a planned way the next day, it may not be you. It may be your colleague who um, who goes into theatre nine and has a conversation then. Mm -hmm. 
absolutely um just to reiterate can we, can, yeah. we hear from, can, can we hear from Anna? does that does that does that um does that fit with what you were thinking yeah uh, i completely understand yeah. great and so um so the way i was seeing this panning out was that we fill in the forms so usually the the, the junior who gets the patient will have quite a clear idea about whether that patient is going to need surgery or whether there's a gray area and so um you know someone with an open fracture who we'd like to be done the next day and there is capacity on theater nine for example someone with a displaced pelvic acetabular fracture someone with a you know th th there are very clear criteria where everyone knows the patient is going to need surgery and mm. so for that group that's probably um 80 percent of the patients we admit we can fill in the form there and then but um but 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 hang on to it maybe hand it on and then and then have a discussion in a planned way with the theater nine anesthetist absolutely yeah and then and then it would just need to be given to the trauma coordinator or shown to the trauma coordinator um before booking onto the list um, uh, so swan, swan wants to wants to say something she keeps popping up <laughs> she often has great ideas I think this might be um, accidental zooming. Yeah, but any kind of checklist to help uh, prevent delays in surgery and cancellation is always good. Okay, so so there's there's two things. One is this we I think Steve and I are seeing this form as um, an information gathering exercise, you know, to, to to gather relevant information about the patient and to to um, for the people who who know what the relevance of it is to, to engage in the process ahead of time and guide our investigations. But you're quite right, Swan, there's a separate thing, which is that our patients are not ready because there's no typically group and save, um, the consent form's gone missing, um, that, that there's, we found a list of four things. And so as a, a separate thing, we're going to have a sort of mini checklist that the, the, the trauma coordinators are going to um, probably go around half seven, eight o'clock in the morning and just check off these four things for the patient yeah. because it's so it's just a perpetual um uh um bugbear that that we haven't been able to get hold of and, and i think that's something that that we're so one of our strengths as as, the, as as a team is that if we identify there's a problem we can you know hand it on either take care of it there and then or hand it on make sure that it's done but the problem we have if it's if it's not being checked then then it doesn't get done and so no, of course. We're, we're going to introduce this along with a very brief um, preoperative checklist for the things that are commonly missed. Okay, cool. Cool. Yes. Can I, good morning guys, Odie here. Morning, Can I just interject? Um, first, thanks for taking the time and I fully support this. It's a great idea. Um, two points one i'd like to build on ahmed's point which is understanding or f how do we find out who's in theater nine so that we don't burden the anesthetists on call um and and then the uh the second issue is which i'm not entirely clear on steve is what are the challenges that you guys are facing that this performer helps solve is it simply the transfer of information and identification of patients to prevent cancellation or are there other challenges that you're looking to solve okay i'm, I'm going to take the first point and i'm going to i'm going to let steve have a minute to think before he answers the second point <laughs> the first point Ode, is that um we are not uh looking for somebody who is doing the theater nine list the next day that's not the aim of this the aim is um so the pathway is patient comes in we gather information we have it all written down and then the next day we we take our forms maybe after the trauma list we we establish who does definitely need surgery and who needs maybe another ct scan or, or a discussion before we establish whether surgery is required then somebody takes the forms in a planned way to the anaesthetist who is physically in theater nine and um, and has a discussion with them then so 
So we're not, we're not running around looking for people who, you know, may not be at work, uh, may not be in the building, may, you know, be busy doing something else. And the person who's in Theatre 9 knows it's a regular thing. They're going to be approached. There's going to be some interaction with our team uh, in respect of future planning. That's the aim of this. Uh, so if I understand that correctly, the, the, the patients who are being handed over on the form are not for theatres on that same day. They're planned for theatre sometime in the future, yeah. but not for that specific day. Understood. So, because it creates a tension in my mind. If the idea behind the form is to identify patients who can be optimised for theatre, mm -hmm. surely presenting them on the day of their surgery is, is too late. Yes, yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. On, on the, on the day okay. of surgery, they're, they're presented anyway, right? We, we have a list and the list gets submitted. Exactly. I mean, we're looking to flag up patients who need uh, the, the input and the expertise of the anaesthetist to optimise them. If right. they're already listed for surgery on that day, it defeats the point. And therefore, this should be in anticipation of them going to surgery. And therefore, there needs to be at least one day lead time for uh, for uh, for things for medical issues to be organised. Yeah, um, I think that, that's, you know, a, I, I, that's a really key point. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 so building on Ahmed's point, if we know who's the anaesthetist in Theatre Nine for say tomorrow, I can then approach them to review the patients today. Um, and, no, and that was my point of so we've, tr we've tried that in the past and that doesn't work because people have um, people have job plans and other commitments and, and mm. already there are some individuals who work exactly like that who want to know about the patients in advance and will see them but it's not universal and that's not something that um, is going to be helpful to try and impose on everyone because there just isn't there isn't actually the resource built into our system for that. And so, so we are, so the next you know, question, if you like, is we're presenting information about a patient to an anaesthetist, but not necessarily the person who's going to, in fact, almost never the person who's actually going to anaesthetize the patient. So what you've hmm. described, Ode, is, is absolutely spot on. And everything that you've said about these patients need to be picked up sooner rather than later so we've got time to optimise them is exactly, that is the point of this whole intervention. Um, looking around for the particular anaesthetist that's going to be doing the day, I would forget about that completely. If you, if you, if you have a look at the way Theatre 12 works, we just see us as a, one group of anaesthetists. We'll see patients that will be then be done the next day, of the day two, three days down the line. The person that's going to be in nine, and as a department, we completely understand that we'll be used as a reference point to make an assessment about these patients and see if there is anything that we can do to optimize them over the next few days. So knowing who it is, not important. The sooner you know that you're going to do an operation on a patient, then that's when you should be approaching us and saying, here's a sick, complex, complex patient. Do you have any advice? Is there anything we can do to get them fitter for surgery? So the person in nine will, will be responsible for that discussion and not the person doing the, the actual anaesthetic for that operation on that day, but as soon as you decide that you are going to go ahead with surgery. Does that make sense? Where's he gone? Has he left? <laughs> well, it's a shame. Yeah, he, has, he has seemed to understand it perfectly. It was, it was no, I, sorry, I, I mute myself for, for, for background noise. I'm, Apologies. Um, so, so that's that's very clear. The point of contact is the anaesthetist in theatre nine, um, yeah. who can then disseminate that information or yeah. or act on it um, uh, for, from that perspective. Thanks. Exactly. Yes. They, they will they will give us advice, and um, so so the next the next question I'm sure that will come up is, what if there's a difference of opinion between the anaesthetist who is giving advice and helping us to optimize the patient? and the person who tries the patient on the day. Um, and part of Steve's work has been to try and give us some standardization of when a test is necessary. So, of course, there's no substitute for 
an anaesthetist going and seeing a patient and assessing them. And I think um, there will still be things that crop up on the day, but I think the process will be overall very helpful in terms of pre preparing in advance and standardizing things. Uh, th there will be always be differences, slight differences in opinion about how to do a particular anaesthetic and everyone has their, their different way, the same as everyone will have slight differences in the way that they operate. But uh, as a general rule, we all have things that, that flag up and, and are kind of we, we see or would read that would, you know, we know that that needs looking at, we know that needs more information. So new onset AF uh, has come up a couple of times recently and patients have been cancelled because they've got an infection or you know, some, something else is going on that we would, all of us as a group would say, that's important, we need to know about that. Slight differences would be the same as yourselves, but, but yeah. broadly speaking, we, we all have a very similar opinion about fitness for surgery. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. Swan, you wanted to say something. Hello? Hello. Hi. Um, not particularly. <laughs> Am I doing something wrong with this app? No, no, I just, uh, uh, occasionally, I think if you unmute yourself, then your, your screen comes yeah. to the top. Um, I see, okay, cool. Um, no, no, not necessarily. Well, shall I move over to, move on to a quick discussion of the form itself? Yeah, great. Uh, so I guess we're- Sounds good. Okay, so I'm gonna try and do this, if it works. Can everyone see that? Yeah. Yeah. So this is this is the this is the form itself. And one thing to bear in mind is this is a new process, an organic process. We're trying this to see how it works. This is the information that we think is important, and these are things that we think regularly get missed or that we'd be worried about. It will uh, possibly even later today uh, be on CRS. We're just developing that form, but for now it's going to be a paper form. Um, so a lot of it's very straightforward, um, and I, we don't want anyone to get form fatigue, but these are standard questions that we would have for everybody and that we would want to know. Um, a few basic demographics at the top, so we can find the function. We know that when they are planned for theatres, so we know how long we've got to prepare. This must be completed section at the top. These, these have been put in because these are the things that are missed recurrently when patients have been cancelled on the day or we've discovered that recurrent problems keep coming through um, that we could potentially have treated or optimised. The, the 50 metres or two flights of stairs is a standard anaesthetic question that we would have and it's, it's a broad screen of fitness for surgery. If someone can do 50 metres or two flights of stairs they're generally seen as fit enough for an operation. So that's quite a key question from our point of view. Pre-existing cardiovascular uh, or respiratory disease, um, they are the, the two main systems, again, that we would be most worried about. And what we just want to exclude is that things like heart failure or a recent MI are, are picked up and commented on and ideally explored. And, and we'd, be, we'd, be, we'd be putting, you know, we'd be putting asthma in there as well. Yeah, so severe asthma, severe COPD, they're, they're, these are things that would change our anaesthetic. Kind of a, an idea of severity, not just the disease itself, but an idea of severity. And I know that we don't want everyone to go into complex medical parkings, but just a, a few indicators uh, would be very useful to give us an idea of, of, of our risk assessment and what, what we could possibly do um, for this patient. Arrhythmia is a common problem and Anticoagulation, again, is a common problem, what they're on and, and whether it needs reversing or not. Um, lots of patients come in with concurrent infections, um, often having decompromised or decompensated because of an infection, and that's when they fall. Renal disease is another one. And then the specialist referral question is, if any of the above things have come up or any other things have come up, do we need to speak to anybody else? Do we need to speak to the respiratory team, the, the, the geriatric uh, team, haematology, whoever it might be. Um, so they're, they're broad screening questions. And I know looking at a form like this might seem a little bit imposing, but you could go through that very, very quickly and you'll, you'll get a lot of that information in less than a minute. And it saves a lot of time in the future. 
Um, the past medical history boxes are just a space to add information, as is drug history and allergies. The bit below that is very useful. So if you have had a conversation with anybody, who is it, what department, what have they said, and how do we contact them if we need to have a, a, an, another conversation? So this would be those, those geriatrics and haematology. Any questions about that? Um, I suppose we should say this, I may, I'm sure you maybe already said it, Steve. Um, this form is only for complex patients. Um, we, don't want yeah. to, we don't want to see, you know, a sort of tick box exercise for patients that are fit and healthy. There, no. There's no. obviously no need. No, so I mean, oh, uh, there'll be a lot of patients that come through that are definitely fit and healthy, that don't need this. But what, what we're finding is that the process of, of skipping this section and not having this discussion leads to problems in, in these patients. So it doesn't have to be for everybody if they're quite clearly ASA one, a, a young fit person falling over and have fractured their ankle, then fine. But if, if somebody does have medical problems, um, we would like to know about it. And this is the format of how we would like to, to, to prompt the next step of discussion, really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so this form is really a prompt to, 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 to preempt any problems that we would find. And, and if there's anything here that we find that we can help treat with or that, that we can offer advice for or that needs specialist referral, the day or two days before gives us opportunity to do that. Finding out about a patient on the day of surgery is a little bit too late. So that's, that's basically the reason for introducing this form. All the anaesthetists are happy to sign their name at the bottom and just say that this, this form has been reviewed. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that the patient's then been seen and is ready for an operation. It means that we've got a broad idea of what the problems are. And, and we're not caught unawares on the day of surgery. Any questions about this? Um, I, I, so I'm wondering about, um, you know, I'm just putting myself in, 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 the, in the shoes of someone who's filling out this form. Um, mm. Do we know, I, I'm not sure, maybe the group have a really clear idea about when to get a chest x-ray and when to get an ECG? Uh, yes. So, I mean, again, this is, this is the conversation that we can and have. Um, so if there are any questions about it, then this is the prompt to say, let's have a look. If a patient's come in and, and they, they, we, we are wondering about um, a, a, an infection, for example, or if they've got chronic respiratory disease or heart disease, or heart failure, then a chest X-ray would be, be important. They don't have to have all of these investigations, but if they have, this is what we would like to have. Kind of included to when we have the conversation day to nine. I I think again as I say I I, I reiterate the um, the form at least to me looks good. The, the the question I'd pose is is it simply a um, a reply of yes ECG has been done or are the are you looking for say a diagnosis or an interpretation say of the ECG in the chest x-ray yeah so we wouldn't be looking for anybody to be a cardiologist and have a detailed uh, review of, of an ECG but if you see anything that is is obvious or anything's highlighted so uh, AF for example is a common one AF makes a, a increases someone's risk of an operation significantly particularly if it's new AF um, so that's something that anybody would be able to identify. Um, and to make sure that it's done as well, so that when we go and see the patient, there is an ECG there that we can review. So if you see anything obvious that you, that you can diagnose and you're happy to, yes. But as I say, with all of these things, we're not asking you to be a specialist in all of these areas. We're not asking you to be an anaesthetist. What we're just asking is for a little bit more information so we can have the conversation and then we can try and optimize these patients. Clear, thanks. The other thing as part of the, the support process going forward would be myself and a few other of the anesthetic consultants are quite happy to give talks, either Zoom talks or when we're back to normal and we have seminar rooms again, um, some talks on the anesthetic side of things, on pre-optimization 
on common conditions that we'd like to know a little bit more about. In addition to this, um, myself and Tom and a few of the other consultants are happy to go on to a rolling of a WhatsApp group, including the trauma coordinators. We thought this was probably the, the, the sensible way to do it, in that if you have any questions and you want a particular patient to be reviewed uh, again or, or picked up over a weekend or overnight when there might not be anybody around, that's always a prompt for us to, to highlight particularly sick ones. So in this WhatsApp group with the trauma coordinators, they can send a message to us and get us involved directly. So that's just another level of support and another level of contact that might be quite useful. Great. So does anybody have any questions about what I think, said I, so think far? I think Ahmed was trying to speak. Okay. All right, you, you, you see prompts somewhere. I don't, I don't, I don't see these. So. Oh, no, what, what I see is um, when people unmute themselves. So it might be accidental but sometimes they're trying to speak and then someone else starts speaking. Ahmed, do you have, do you have uh, yeah? It's, it's completely clear, but regarding the uh, group and save spot, uh, I don't know, it's, it's a complete struggle for all of us, this group and screen and uh, all the time we are uh, preparing the case and the day before, uh, we we surpri surprisingly find that this uh, group and save get rejected. So if I want to prepare a case two or three days before and fill this this form, I don't know if um, I, I don't think that the group and save will be uh, something which we, we are sure that we are filling because most probably uh, there is a, a validity for this group and save. So, so yes, yeah, so you're, you're quite right. I mean, this is a this is a perpetual problem that that lots of people have been banging their head against a brick wall for um, for a number of years, longer than that. And um, one thing that seems to have helped is we need processes. We need processes that are going to be robust enough to try and to try and stop any patients from slipping through the net, um, because because what we found is, is we have some systems, so you look on power chart and it seems that all is well with the group and save, but actually you can only find out the truth by phoning the lab, which is discouraged, but we still have to do that sometimes, or looking on blood track. Um, and so one thing that, that, that was helpful is that every morning the, the SHO who does the post-date ward round uh, or the on-call SHO, they're usually the same person one of the SHOs has to check the group and saves for all the patients who are scheduled for theatre over the coming days. And sometimes they're the ones who find out first that a patient who's booked for that day doesn't have validity, you know, before anyone else has noticed. And we can get onto it there and then. And they'll, they should also be checking the patients for the next day and, you know, patients scheduled hypothetically for three or four days' time. Um, and that's been helpful. So I guess as a person filling the form, the thing to do is to uh, is to you know we could have a system where as well as entering a clinical note for a patient, somebody puts on their uh, group and saves confirmed valid for the next day, and then you could look at the record and see that that's the case. Um, there's a lot of people doing small parts of this, and and what we want is 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 the the checks that are in place at any particular point in time. To, to, to actually be to actually be used. And so you're quite right, you shouldn't be writing, you know, tick, it's done on the assumption that somebody did it when the patient was admitted, because, because as we've seen so many times, it's, it's just, you know, there's been a problem, unless we double check it, we won't find it. Uh, I just had a quick question about the form being online on CRS. Is it going to be a situation where you have to fill in everything, otherwise the form doesn't get saved. Um, because like um, Homer said, that everybody's going to be doing different bits of it. And yeah. so, you know, like, for example, the, um, uh, the discharge summaries that we do, um, that can be edited and changed and it doesn't, everything doesn't have to necessarily be filled out fully um, for it to be saved. Yeah. Whereas, you know, sometimes other things you have to fill out everything before it's saved yeah, yeah. no i think sorry go on. i was going to say yeah in, in terms of the the user experience and the concept of hard stops with any of these forms 
Um, I think ideally it's it's going to come down to to asking the right questions. If something is guys, what do you think? <laughs> so I guess in, in answer to that question, uh, I mean I don't agree with with everything having to be filled out and it being a laborious exercise. There will be an element of of us well of people relying on each other to do a thorough job. So if something is relevant, then it needs to be filled out. Also ticking away in the background is the is the um is the project where we are trying to get remote access for all of our trainees. And so you can use your own device, you know, you can, we can bring a device yeah. in and show someone. And so um, once that becomes possible, then having an electronic form makes even more sense. Um, and I'm very keen, I totally agree with you, Steve, I'm very keen for there not to be a sort of annoying um, you must tick every box, otherwise the whole thing has been wiped off. Um, I, I don't want it to be like that. I think that's that's not going to work. Well, that's good. Any other questions? Are people happy to start using this this form from today? So patients that come in that are planned for theatre, not necessarily today, but over the next few days, as soon as you know that you're going to do it, we can start having discussions with the Theatre 9 and Ethetist. In In the same vein that we would... Have we, have we, so I've got a question. Have we, have we got, have we got some forms? We need to, um, so, uh, yes. <laughs> so, uh, Logistics. yeah, we have. The, tra the, the trauma coordinator has got a, a big stack of the forms printed off. Uh -huh. Um, and there are all, there's also a big stack in theater nine. Um, okay. the, we can, it's, it's, it's digital copies that I can email out to everybody. Uh, I did email it to uh, the trauma coordinator, I think included Swan on a, on a message on Friday, I think. Mm -hmm. So I think that should have gone out to all the trainees. Yeah, I think, I think yeah, that's, that I sent a copy out to everyone as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think everyone has seen it. Um, and, uh, and one thing Steve and I have talked about um, is, that, is that right now the, the numbers of trauma patients coming in are, are still less than what we normally see. And so, um, so it's quite a good time to start something like this. We're not, we're not, we're not swamped. Um, it's quite a good time to see, to see how, it, how it's gonna work when we actually start doing it. Uh, yeah, sounds good. Um, we can ask the team today who is on call to start filling these out uh, on paper to start off with. Yeah, I think I, I think it's uh, it's good to roll it out during a, a reasonably quiet period just for people to become familiar with the form and to get into the habit of filling it out. Um, I do have a question around the next steps beyond filling this out, i.e. how do we track the progress and the effectiveness of this? Mm -hmm. What we'd ideally like to see is that the numbers of patients cancelled on the day of surgery go down. Um, it might be difficult to quantify. Um, what you might find is if a patient is optimised, the result will be a reduction in, in days uh, till discharge. Uh, I mean, a morbid morbidity mortality kind of effect. Um, it's definitely worth, worth thinking about, and I'll, I'll have to chat about it. Um, because we do need to know that it's that it's worthwhile um, but at the first stage uh, well I think we'll we'll, we'll 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 introduce the process and then and and see whether it works and then see I guess we'll, we'll have to look at the numbers um, of, of cancellations I think ideally on the day first of all but also just in terms of um... I guess one concern is that that a conversation we, we, we take we get the information a conversation takes place and then everything gets very busy, but then there's some downtime, and it's sort of a tasks tasks that have been intended get forgotten. You know, how do we? So there's a question of how do we, um, how do we keep on top of that? How do we incorporate it? Maybe we need to incorporate it into the into the handover process. Mm. And the reason, and the reason this prompts us is exactly for the reason that you've stated, Stephen, which is the difficulty in gathering information after the event has passed. If we build in a, a review uh, system as we launch this, uh, I think it'll be a, a more effective way of tracking it, rather than being retroactive. 
whether it's being used or not, or whether it's having an impact. Because as I say, the, the whether, it, well, degree of impact will be complicated. I think, I think Odin's volunteering. You, you, I think he's volunteering to do a prospective oh. audit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Tag, I'm it. <laughs> I, I, I'd be happy to. <laughs> if, if, that's, if, that's, uh, if that brings value, sure. Well, I, I think you're right, and I think it would be. We have to show that any intervention has been useful and had an impact. Um, what we would need to know is how often it's being used and whether there are different groups and whether there's any improvement in outcomes, whatever outcomes they would be that we decide to measure. Um, and so I think it probably, it probably is useful for measuring. Um, and yeah, and if anyone, if yourself or anybody else wants to volunteer in that, um, I think it would, be, it would be an excellent project. We'll, 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 we'll need to have another conversation about that. Um, but yeah, any, any help would be appreciated. I'm, I'm, um, I'm quite excited about this, Steve. I, um, it's been a long time coming and, and, and actually, you know, we've had projects before. Um, mm. I think I think the simpler the simpler the intervention is, and the more it makes sense, the more likely it is to work. I agree. Um, and, and with all of these things, there might be various modifications that come to it as as we go on and as we develop. Yeah. Every process gets refined, but starting here and finding that we're just prompting more of a discussion between us as two departments, I think, is the right way to go. And then, yeah, however this evolves. We'll take it from there. Yeah, and I, I guess I also want to say that um, it's been a time where many people have felt tremendous pressure, you know, with the with the crisis, and uh, and and now that things are calming down slightly, it's still quite a dangerous time for people psychologically. Um, and I'm sure that oh, Prabhu has joined us. Hi, Prabhu. Hi, Mr. Sorry, I yeah, I didn't notice the time. I was just yeah. It's no problem. So, so I'm sure. I'm sure you've. I hope you've put your, you know, done your hair and makeup because all of this is going on YouTube. That's probably why you've joined us. Uh, so we were just talking about um, about the, the the conversation that takes place between um, someone from our department and the theatre nine anaesthetists at that time. I'm sure we will all be mindful of uh, of what's going on in theatre nine and. And because this is something done in advance, it may be necessary to say, I can come back in 20 minutes or, um, or, or you know, now's not the time or, or you know, whatever. Um, I'm hoping it will just lead to better communication between our departments. It, it, it might be that as, as things evolve, we get into a stage where four o'clock in the afternoon, everyone knows that's the time that we have a discussion. And any patients, not necessarily for the next day or the next few days, can 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 be be discussed at that point and so the anaesthetist will know that that's the time that they need to be free the, the, the whoever's going to come down and book the patients knows that that's a good time yeah um that might be the case or some other way in which it it transpires that we work well, nine o'clock in the morning or you know i don't know let's let's see what works nine o'clock. Yeah. yeah yeah so we'll see does that does anybody need anything else from me at this point i mean i know you've got copies of the form everybody should have it um, no, I, I think everything is, is clear and uh, as far as I'm aware, um, with Swan's email, everyone's uh, received the form itself. Right, okay. Um, well, I'll tell you what, I can, well, I give my number to uh, Liz and the trauma coordinators. We'll start this group. So if anyone has any questions, they can either go through there. I'm happy to be contacted directly if anybody has any questions and you just want to ask me. Um, but that's a port of call. Okay. Okay. So, so today, so Swan is going to speak to whoever's on call today and ask them if they see a suitable patient to, to fill out the form. Yeah. Yeah. Let me start today. All right. Fantastic. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Good to speak to you all. Thank you very much. Thanks, Steve. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye now. <laughs>